I managed to play a certain song mm. without anybody teaching me. Mm. How, no, how, how young was that? I'm actually very curious. Uh, around four years old. Four years old? Yeah. Yeah. Hello everyone, I'm Ji Wei. And I'm Samuel. Welcome to another episode of Tongue Insider, Insider. Where we share the inside stories of Singaporean musicians and artists. Today we're so happy and so honoured to have with us Malay musician Shafika. Yay! Hi everyone, so um, I'm Shafika and I'm a musician. Um, I wear many different hats really. I'm a composer, an educator and I also perform on my accordion and uh, right now I'm doing uh, lots of um, teaching, mm. uh, CCAs mm. especially, I teach Angklong mm. and I'm also a fellow uh, artist fellow in YST. Yeah, Yong 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 wow. yes, yeah. And right. you brought with you your accordion today, yes. <laughs> are you performing for us or not? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> what will you be playing for us? Okay, so I'm going to play uh, Jong Jong Inai, mm -hmm. which is a folk song from Terengganu, Malaysia. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to add my own twist to it. So starting off with an improvisatory passage and then going on to... It's really upbeat and mm. very fun to play. So I, I really like to present this to all of you. Yeah. Okay. Wow, we're looking, looking forward! forward. Looking yeah. forward. Yeah. That was so upbeat and so nice! Fun, right? Yeah, it's a fun, yeah. Well, a fun song. It's a children's piece. It's actually a children's song oh. and yeah, it's sung by, um, you know, uh, by Malay children and to learn the 
uh, the words. Mm. Uh, it's really, really fun. And Thank I love you so it. much for bringing this piece well, to us. I'm going to go segue into this real interview section right now. And I want to ask, I mean, for a lot of our viewers, they don't really know you, but Shafika is actually a very established Malay musician. Mm. And she, you actually have your own ensemble as well. Mm. You artistic direct, you compose. And in fact, um, Shafika was the first Malay uh, graduate from Yong Sudo Conservatory of Music. Wow. And she had a, a she has a master's in composition from Yong Sudo Conservatory of Music as well. That's really amazing. I'm sure a lot of um, aspiring young musicians yeah. look up to you yeah. as a role model. Especially a lot of Malay musicians, they will definitely look up to you as a role model. I think I'm just blessed to be in this particular mm. period where um, you know uh, my my talents are recognized mm. and uh, it's, it's just been a phenom phenomenal journey, mm. you know, throughout my life uh, from playing the piano mm. and then going into composition and then mm. delving into traditional Malay music. Yeah, can you tell us, you know, and chronicle for us, you know, yeah. the music journey and then how did you get involved in Malay music? Yeah, well, um, so the, the story goes that uh, I started off playing piano, mm. you know, as a child and um, it's just one day I was just tinkling around with my keyboard, uh, toy keyboard at home and then I managed to play a certain song mm. j without anybody teaching me. Mm. Oh. So my parents like uh, sent me to piano, piano mm. school basically. So it started from there and I learned mm. classical music. Your talent was already there. Uh, how, no, how, how young was that? I'm actually very curious. Uh, uh, around four years old. Four years old and you started playing a tune. Yeah, so wow. basically I have wow. uh, a certain like, uh, I wouldn't say perfect pitch but I'm able to Identify. Uh, identify pictures and then just produce it on the instrument yeah, at a very young age like, basically so and then my um, training started in classical piano um, so it's all western pieces that we were yes doing correct now. correct so from from the very beginning from the very start i was uh, you know playing classical pieces on the piano i had one-on-one -on -one, um, tutelage mm. and uh, and i also grew up listening to malay songs mm -hmm. through the radio pop so, songs um, Pop songs, but had also which had also Malay um, traditional Malay Influencer. music influences. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes, because like you know, Singapore have two different mm. radio channels. Mm. So this particular one, um, they they play a lot of evergreen, mm. green classics. Mm. So I grew up listening to that because my mom was like listening mm. to radio. So that got in delved in me as well. How do you get involved into Malay music? Then? Yeah, so you know, um, throughout my classical uh, training and then. Uh, in secondary school, I got into MEP, mm. a music elective, elective program. program. Yeah. So basically, uh, through this program, um, I learned uh, other than classical music, mm. we started learning about ethnic music. Mm. Right? Yo, yeah, that's right. Yeah? Mm. Chinese music, mm. Indian music, mm. but no Malay music. What? At oh. the period of time, they didn't <laughs> have it in the syllabus. No Malay music. They have it now, you know. Like, yes, yeah. exactly. So they have it mm. now, but during that time, there was no Malay music. And I was like confused. Mm. like. I've been hearing Malay music like mm. through the radio mm. and I know that you know um, there must be something unique about Malay music that but why am I not learning it in mm. school? Mm. Why is it not there? So I became curious. So it triggered something so in it you. So triggered, it mm. did trigger something. So there was one trigger and then another trigger was that um, uh, during my sister's wedding she actually engaged a treasure Malay ensemble to play as an entertainer yeah, so and that's how I got to see that oh actually there's a Malay traditional Malay ensemble mm. in Singapore. Um and and I saw someone playing at the accordion. Ah. Yeah. And I'm very curious, what is the makeup of a traditional Malay ensemble that you saw at your sister's mm, wedding? Okay. So for a traditional Malay music ensemble, right, we have um, instruments such as the accordion. Mm -hmm. Okay, and also the violin is used. Mm. Uh, we have uh, Malay uh, rhythmic uh, or percussion instruments mm. such as the rubana mm. um, and then uh, to add the modern element, uh, modern feel to this uh, music there's also the use of the electric bass, mm. guitar, uh, even a keyboard. Mm. Yeah, it was no, it's, very, it's very unique. There are actually a lot of Western instruments that have been repurposed into Malay music as well, right? Yeah, how, how did that actually come about? Well, I, I believe it's through the years of development, years of um, basically looking to the context of Malay music. You have mm. to look into how um, these instruments have come over to the, you know, mm. the region through um, things like 
uh, historical trade mm. through colonialism, mm. you know, westernization, mm. and and so these instruments have been adopted into the mm. Malay uh, the culture. The canon design. of yeah, yeah, instrument, right? Exactly. And then you know, you guys have basically found a way to actually make it uniquely yours. That's right. Yeah. Like very yeah. unique. I think because you wear so many hats, and one of that is of a composer as well, mm. right? Mm. So how do you actually feel being uh, the the uh, a Malay women composer in Singapore? How is it like? Um, okay, so I feel very blessed actually that um, at this turn of the century, right, in this 21st century, I, I was I was emerging as a composer. Mm. And so it's during this time that I think there's much awareness about mm. how important it is to have gender parity mm. yeah, in the uh, music scene. And so um, I've been fortunate enough to be called to mm. Uh, exemplify this. Yeah, as a female yeah. composer. Yeah, as a female yeah. composer. And someone that other female aspiring composers yeah. can yeah. look up to us. But have, so there, have there been instances where, for example, you felt slighted because of your 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 gender? There's a lot to do with um, the insecurity of an artist, right? Mm -hmm. uh, especially when you know in this in this scene, you hear more of um, other better composers and you and um, for me but then the, then again for me it's not necessary that I'm a female but it's just more of not being enough in the scene mm. I guess for me because I wear different hats mm. so um, me uh, I, I embrace the identity that I'm not solely just a composer mm. I do many other different many things, things. Mm. and so if I um, maybe my experience as a composer is not felt as much as those who are really just, you know, composer. just composing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so basically you're saying that you know in Singapore as a female composer you've never really felt a lot of not so gender. much. It, yeah, yeah, not so because much. Because in uh, an overseas, you know, in uh, yeah. there are, like there'll be female composers leagues and all that and yeah. they'll all constantly um, be a need to say that you know what we are not hearing enough of female composers in um, traditional uh, Western music, yeah. for example, and, and you know, and uh, you are right. Gender parity is basically a very yeah. large issue. I mean, for for young aspiring female composers out there watching this program, mm. is there anything you want to say to them? Just do what you want to do. Just try it. You know, you never know until you do it. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing is, um, uh, don't be afraid. Like. It's, so it's, this is goes to me as well. Mm. It's very easy to say, but um, it really takes a lot of courage, uh -huh. a lot of courage, and um, also because um, for me, my experience as an artist has always been like uh, self-conscious, mm. you know, like self-conscious of yourself. But um, you never know until you try it. So. Uh, we, we have to be afraid to take the leap. Mm. Uh, be, be, be afraid. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Don't be afraid to take <laughs> no, the leap. I, I, <laughs> yes. I agree with you. I yes. think all artists, in some sense of the word, they always feel this sense of insecurity mm. that always happens. When especially when your artwork goes out, and then it's for the world to see. You know, yeah. you, it, there's this huge sense of insecurity sometimes. It's like, is it good enough? You know, or am I good enough? Is my work good enough? You know. Do you think that you have gotten better actually at dealing with this? Oh yeah, definitely. How did you do that? So because at the end of the day, I realised that each person is unique. Mm. Each individual has their own strength mm -hmm. and has something different to offer. Mm. So whether or not you feel good about your work, um, there's something unique about it. Yes, it's and there was you. there's always an audience for your mm. type exactly, of work, yeah. right? And you'll be That's very right. surprised by yeah. the outcome. Correct, mm. yes. Do you think that, you know, being a composer is difficult in Singapore? For myself, uh, I think yes, definitely. Mm. If you're just thinking about just becoming a composer, it's, it's going to be difficult. Mm. Like, and also you have to think about what kind of composer you want to be. Yes. You want to be. For me, as a composer, I like to diversify. I like mm. to like, I, I don't really look into just one thing, um, you know, composing for, for example, just solo instruments, for mm. example. Or, um, I'm. If recently, I've been dealing with lots of um, commissions where mm. I get to compose for dancers, mm. for example. Yeah, so being a composer is difficult, but you have to be able to yeah. um, go into different avenues in mm. order to, yeah. Uh, yeah, to so sustain mm. yourself. Yes. When you say it's difficult, is it a bread and butter issue or it's an artistic difficulty issue. that you face? Mm, I think so it's bread and butter issues. I think okay. artistically, uh, there are demands in, in which like um, if, if someone knows you as a composer, I think um, and someone commissions mm. you to do something, I think they expect mm. certain things. Mm. And um, 
uh, artistic wise, mm. um, I am able to play in terms mm. of okay. I I for me, I guess I look into uh, what is being expected. Mm. Mm. And that's your versatility as a composer. Yeah, you know, exactly. Right? Yeah. Uh, the challenge is that yeah, exactly. basically you have to meet up with what is expected of you, but also try uh, in a way insert your own voice mm. into yeah. it. I, I want to move the, the topic now to a little bit more about Malay music and because I think you're very passionate about Malay music and you actually have a lot to share. Um, what do you think about the Malay music scene in Singapore mm -hmm. and what is unique about Malay music in Singapore as compared to other places? For Malay music in Singapore, I think uh, for the past 10 years it has bloomed tremendously. Mm. Um, it started off, um, I I think I can uh, briefly say that it started off around you know in, in the year 1996, 1997, mm. where we have this pioneer group, Sri Miley Guy, who went out there um, in terms of uh, making traditional Malay music seem new, mm. yeah, with their instrumentation, um, and then um, it was very unique, um, and that was a particular mm. band that played. In my, your, at my your sister's, sister's wedding. wedding. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Inspired exactly. by Malay music from that. Yeah. Are they still active now? Ah, yes, they are okay. still active. Oh, okay. active. And so from there, it, it inspired me and it, it inspired many other Malay musicians as mm. well to create and form their own mm. bands. And I, I believe in the past 10 years, um, these uh, ensembles, uh, these bands, when they go out, um, there's a demand for it mm. in the wedding industry. Mm. Mm. So uh, these bands act as service um, entertainment, entertainment service, service providers. providers. Yeah. Yes. So because of that, it has been blooming. blooming. Interesting. Yeah. And I I went into the scene in uh, two thousand nine. Mm. So about uh, more or less ten years ago. Mm. And you perform in weddings ago. as well. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yeah. So I'm very active um, playing the accordion with my band. We mm. play out out mm. there in weddings. Mm. Yeah. And you get your name known also, right? And more people right. get to know right. about as you. As, well. as you perform, you get a referral to do yeah. another wedding and it goes okay. on and That's right, on. yes, yes. And but, uh, so now, Nick, my next, the follow-up to the previous question was, in what way is Singaporean Malay music, let's say, different from, different from mm. Malaysia? Malaysia, yeah. Malaysia. Mm. Um, I think what is unique about Singapore is that I think it's all ingrained in us that every time we produce something or do something, it has to be unique. It has to be, mm. oh, really something new, something refreshing. So with all, what, from my observations, with all the uh, ensembles that I've seen, each group has their own unique identity. Mm. Um, and they try to, uh, you know, even though the repertoire is the same, mm. the, the songs are uh, basically traditional, songs uh, but they, the arrangements are different mm. in and their own every bit exactly and yeah and then you know we also have malay music scene where the music goes on stage and uh, being performed for cultural shows mm. um, with um, dancers mm. so music the music has involved evolved in a way where it has um, really fresh Elements, um, um, fusions of mm. styles. Would you yeah. consider the fusion identity something that's very unique to Singapore, or is, is Malaysia actually doing something? I think it's well? very diverse. It's um, mm. you can't really put a, you know, like a label and say mm. that okay, this is Singapore. So Malay yeah, interestingly, music. Th this thing, yeah. th do the Singaporean Malay music have a, 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 can we discern it from let's say Malaysian Malay music, for mm. example? Is there a, is an issue of identity, for example? Do you, do you think that we can be able to discern it? Or is, is it not at the level that we can discern it yet? Not currently, mm. I feel it's not at the level that mm. we can discern it yet. It's mm. still particularly, you know, quite the same. Mm. And we do mm. um, get references mm. again from music that is performed in Malaysia. Mm. Yeah. Um, uh, but we try to do things in our own ways, Way. yeah. uh, more or less, you know. And um, I can also uh, bring up other references um, to other groups. We have been doing astonishingly mm. well. Like mm -hmm. for example, Nadi Singapura. Oh yeah, it's really yeah. 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 That yeah. in it's itself, like yeah. you know, yeah. breakthroughs, right? Yeah. Breaking yeah. boundaries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes. what would you yeah. say uh, about the state of Malay music currently? You know, from the boom that you say mm. that happened, and then how mm. students were inspired by that boom. Are and now, where are we at now at this stage? Definitely a lot. Like uh, also, we have to look into. Um, the kind of music that we're talking about as well, right? Uh, for example, when, when I've been talking about traditional Malay music and I'm talking about like the ensemble um, mm. setting, setup, mm. um, 
playing the songs, the repertoire that is based on the traditional rhythms. Mm. Yeah, for example, uh, uh, Ridwan's group, Nadi Singapura, mm. is percussion based. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I guess there are different avenues in which we can look into how Malay music is transforming. Mm. Mm. Um, but it is transforming. It is transforming. It is. You can feel yeah. it in your yeah, blood. And definitely. You can definitely look forward to seeing more of the transformation exactly. yeah. in the years yes. ahead. Exciting right? time. Yes. Well, thanks so much for the in-depth mm. sharing yeah. of Malay music. That what that's a real insider. We should now move on to our next segment. Which so is this is our company tree <laughs> actually it's not as our native plant la. and um, we actually have small little um, sort of like pockets of mm. paper there and um, you know we're going to ask you to pick out tree from the tree and then we're going to ask you questions from that yeah. and these questions are actually posed by um, uh, some of our followers, followers uh, people who yeah. want to know a little bit more yep. about um, what you do as well and so yeah go ahead and pick one <laughs> pick wisely okay, yeah. pick wisely how can I know <laughs> questions really Okay. Uh, 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 um. Oh dear. So number one, do you play more than one instrument, and do you think that it's common for Singaporean musicians to play more than one? Accordion and piano. Two. 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 Still, it's two. more than one. I, yeah, but it's true. More, a lot of Singaporean musicians actually play multiple instruments. Mm. Yeah. What's the reason you think that people play more than one instrument? I think because the piano and the violin are like the most popular ones. I, I, get, I guess it's... Start out. With start off with that. And then they learn okay. something else after that. Yeah. Okay, okay well, let's, let's do our second question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. How do you think locals can have a greater appreciation for the art? <laughs> this is quite difficult. Yeah, it's quite very tough. difficult. Yeah, it's a tough question we often ask. It's a very broad question. It's a very broad question. Yeah. And it's something that um, I, I believe all musicians are struggling with, you know, like trying to educate and inform the locals that, you know, this is happening, this is Singaporean music. Uh, really, really difficult. But I think going into the education system from young, like as in um, um, exposing young children to the music, will be very helpful. You know, because Singapore is so diverse, and I also noticed that, um, that there needs to be, you, you need to break barriers, like, um, because we, we, we're dealing with um, traditional cultural music. It's not like a certain cultural music is only for that community. Mm -hmm. Yeah? It can we be need to break that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. So yeah. I think um, as educators, we need to break that as well. Yeah. yeah. And there's um, really nothing wrong for a family, parents and children, uh, say a Chinese family, to attend a Malay classical exactly. concert, right? Yeah. Just to get more exactly. exposure. Okay. Yeah. I've been to a Teochew opera mm. concert yeah. where I'm the only <laughs> Malay. Yeah, you know Watching. like a bit... Oh, yeah. Do they look at you like, hey, how come they, yeah. Yeah, 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 they do, they do. No, like, but, quite, yeah, yeah. that's you know? the thing, you know, I think there needs to be more intermingling exactly. with the art forms as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, from there is so much each other has to offer. You. In nice. fact, um, Tang is also working, uh, we have worked with you on quite a number of times, mm -hmm. uh, including going on TV for, I can't remember, was it? Uh, it was, um, it was a charity show. Oh yeah. I don't yes. remember what the charity uh, was. President Star Charity. No, it's not a President Star Charity. Com Chess. Com Chess. The one with Rocky Chan. Yeah. It was so amazing. Yeah. It was really great. And we are having an upcoming video um, coming up where we are working together with you and we are playing mm. this piece called Journey, which mm -hmm. is a com combination of Gelang Si Paku Gelang and yes. Sri Tanjong. Thank you so much, Tafika. It's you always a privilege coming. to Thank have you inside our studio and all your insights. I think we treasure them so much. Yeah. And if you'd like to watch more of Jafika's playing on the accordion with the Turn Ensemble, check us out. We have a piece titled Journey on our Facebook page. We have come to the last episode of Turn Insider. Let us know in the comments box below what you would like to see on the next season of Turn Insider. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. See you next time. Bye! Bye.